Hey there, writers. Um, today, for day two, we're going to move to the next stage of the writing process, which happens to be the collecting stage. This is where writers collect a lot of ideas. Um, I don't know how you're used to doing it in the past, but I don't want you to just think of one idea, and that's the first idea that comes to your head, and that's what you write about. Um, the best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of ideas. And so good writers will sit there and kind of brainstorm a ton of ideas that they can write about. And then once they go to this choosing stage, they can think about which idea is speaking to them at that point. Okay, so we're going to use this chart, and it's called the first, last, and only. And let me uh, um, exit out of the presentation mode so that I can actually write on it. And so in this column, I'm going to be think about the first time I ever did something. Okay, the very first time I did it. Um, in this column, I'm going to think about the opposite. The last time I did something. And in this last column, I'm going to write about the only time I did something. Now, the reason we do the first, last, and only strategy is because usually, well, personal narratives should have some sort of strong emotion tied to them. If you care about what you're writing about, then chances are the person reading it is also going to care about it. But if you don't care about it, then chances are the person reading it is not going to care about it. So we want it to be memorable. Remember we said we noticed that personal narratives are memorable? Well, the first time you did something, the last time you did something, and the only time you did something usually are memorable. So, um, and in these boxes, I'm just gonna write about the topic. I don't need to start putting details yet because I don't know if that's what I wanna write about. The first time I, um, ooh, drove a car. Do you remember the first time you drove a car? Super fun. No, of course, but I remember where I was. I was in a parking lot. My mom took me around and she's like, okay, this is kind of boring. Let's go to the street now because I was okay at it. She's like, wow, you're, you know, I watched my brother learn. He's an older um, brother. And so I would kind of already learned. So the first time I drove a car, um, the first time I ooh, had a child, wow, River, whew, that was a day I will never, ever forget. Now, I've had Tennessee since and Skylar since, and so each one of those times was memorable, but I think you'll always remember the first time I had a child. The first time eesh, I broke my ankle. I have, are you ready for this? I have broken my ankle four times. Can you believe it? Two on, no, three on one side and one on the other side. This left ankle is the one I've broken three times. The first time I broke it, um, this is not a great story. Um, I was actually, my brother was, he was 16 and I was 14 at the time and he was driving. He had just learned to drive and he and I were kind of goofing off being really not smart, really, really not smart. Um, and I, I was out of the car and he was driving the car and I kind of got on top of the hood. Oh, terrible. Don't ever, ever do that. And luckily I only broke my ankle. He, he went really, really slow. It's not like he was like going fast, like he was trying to do it. Like I was on the hood and then he just kind of coasted. And then as he stopped, I slid off and I broke my ankle on the ground. So luckily I just broke my ankle. That was a terrible idea. Don't ever do that. Um, so that's good for the first time. Let's see if there's anything else I can remember off the top of my head. Not right now. Let's go to the last time. The last time I, for some reason during this COVID thing, the last time I ate at a restaurant, I actually don't know if I'll be able to write enough about that because I don't know if I know enough details, but it would be kind of cool if I can think of it. I'll have to try to think about that. Um, it's October now. So the last time I went swimming, that was kind of a fun one. We put Skylar in, which was actually his first time going swimming. Um, and so we went swimming at my parents' pool. We jumped off the diving board. And, um, ooh, that's the first time. The first time I did a flip and a half, one and a half flips and dived into the pool was fun. I did a... That's why this is kind of a fun strategy, because you might write about something else and it jogs your memory to something different. Ooh, this is a good one. The last time I went golfing 
It was at Hanson da Hanson Dam. I went with Anival, our old um, PE teacher, and he and I still chat. We chatted earlier tonight about the Laker game. Um, and so, yeah, we went golfing at Hanson Dam. I won. Thank you very much. It was a very long walk. It was actually the first time I'd played Hanson Dam, which is kind of funny. I could have put that in the first time, but it was the last time I went golfing. I haven't been since then. That was whew, a long, long time ago. Um, the last time, of course, I could put the last time I had a child. That'll be interesting. That was Skylar. Okay. And then the only time, the only time I, and it takes a little bit of time to think. Good writers don't rush to get ideas down there. You kind of think the only time I, well, here's one thing. The only time I had chicken pox, I remember taking oatmeal baths. I remember itching so badly. They got really bad right under my neck. Oh, it was awful. Um, the only time I cut my head open. Oh, that wasn't the only time. I cut my head open once here, and I cut my head open once here. Huh. Oh, well. Um, and, and that's actually a good point, cut my head open. That's actually a good point. Both of those stories would make for memorable stories. So I put it under the only time, but now that I remember, I'm like, oh, no, I've done it twice. Oh, I can't write about it. Yes, of course you can write about it. Just because you've done something more than once doesn't – I mean I could have put it in the last time or the first time. doesn't really matter. The point is it doesn't matter um, whether it truly is the only time you've ever done it. You want it to be a memorable experience, and the way to make it memorable is think about the first time you did something, the last time, and the only time. I'm going to stop there so that this video is not too long, but notice what I did was I just kind of took my time – and went one column at a time. And you'll notice as I was in a certain column, if it reminded me of something else, I was okay to go to that column. Let your mind go where it wants to go. Let your thoughts go where they want to go. And that's how you have a good idea is by having <laughs> a lot of ideas. Now, if you finish this early, like you breeze through it, you know what else good writers do? Is they pick one of these and they kind of just start writing about it. Not your personal narrative, but you just start writing about why you like it. So that's a little bonus coverage. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to make a text box down here. And this cutting my head open one is interesting. I might not write this about my personal narrative, but since that idea is going in my head, I'm going to kind of just write some details about it. Um, I was playing basketball at the park. Whoops. I grabbed a rebound, I can't spell right now, or I can't type, I can spell, I just can't type for some reason. I grabbed a rebound and was ready to start the break. I was ready to whoosh, turn and go. I wanted a fast break, Magic Johnson, you know what I'm saying? I was ready to start the fast break. I spun and bam, the next thing I knew, Oops, that's not how you spell that new. I was laying on the ground, staring at the sky. I heard people say, he's bleeding. He's bleeding. I thought they meant the other guy. Nope. It was me. <laughs> I had a huge gash on my forehead and had to go get stitches. At least I'd have a cool scar for my first day of teaching the next day. That is a true story. The day before I was teaching, I was playing basketball at the park. It was summer school. It wasn't at OCS. It was summer school, what, 13, 14 years ago, whenever that was. And I cut my head right here. I still have the scar. If we get back in person, you'll be able to see the scar. And the next day, I had to go teaching. I had a big old bandage on my forehead. And people were like, what happened? I'm like, I got attacked by a bear. I made up a new story every single time somebody asked me. So that's all I would write about that one. Notice that is not my personal narrative. That is just a quick write, okay? We call this a quick write. In fact, I'm going to put that um, on here so that we know what that's called. 
Quick right. I'll make it a little bit smaller. That was a little aggressive. Um, and then I'll move that away, obviously, so I can actually see my quick right. Um, but that's what good writers do. I'll make that a little bit better somehow. Is they come up with their ideas, and then if uh, if an idea is talking to you or speaking to you or remembering it, go ahead and get those ideas out. Maybe there's another one I wanted to write about. I could do a second quick write down here, right? And I could just write another one. And maybe if I wanted to put a border around it, that would help me keep it away from the other one. So now there's a border around it. I could write a second quick write. I don't have any in my head right now, but that's what good writers do. So collecting, yes, try to fill out every box of this first, last, and only. Hopefully one of these ideas will turn into your personal narrative. But if you finish early, go ahead and um, choose one of them and do a quick write about it. Okay, that doesn't mean it's your personal narrative. If I choose this idea, I can use some of these same sentences, but I would also rethink about it and format it and develop it a little bit differently. Okay, so that's collecting. Um, let's go ahead and do that. And then tomorrow we will actually get into choosing and developing. Should be fun.